Yeah, you won't believe it, bro. People are trying to say this is a sackable offense, eating meat off off Salt Bay's uh, fork and holding his hand and all that. Yo, people don't have no lives, Gunnar Souls. This is crazy. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Back again with another video. Egal Talks Football, you already know what it is. Um, today on Arsenal News Today, we're going to get into some topics that we need to discuss. Of course, we're going to speak about Alexander Izak, Victor Osman, Ivan Tony. We're going to speak about Mikel Arteta, squad rotation and everything else. And of course that infamous Salt Bay video. But before we go any further, just to let you guys know, there is a sponsor on the channel. SofaScore is sponsoring the channel. And of course, it is one of the best apps out there to follow the NFL, the NBA, and of course, football. There is player ratings and everything else on there. And it's a wonderful app. You guys, there is the link in the description to go uh, to go uh, download it for free. And of course, it does help your boy as it is one of the first channel sponsors. So big up SofaScore for sponsoring this video today. And of course, make sure you guys go check out SofaScore. Now let's get straight into the video, ladies and gentlemen. We got to talk about this ridiculous topic. So Mikel Arteta was seen in Dubai, enjoying his life, Gunnar Souls. He's enjoying his life, doing his thing. And you guys know everyone hates Salt Bay after what happened with Messi and touching the uh, touching the uh, World Cup trophy and everything else. People just don't like Salt Bay. But one thing people don't like about Salt Bay is how he feeds people meat and how he does this. People are saying this is not my manager. They're going crazy. What's your take on it? Because to me, it's just like, let the man enjoy his life. Personally, I don't like Salt Bay, but let Mikhail enjoy his life, man. Personally, I wouldn't be eating meat uh, uh, off, uh, and I wouldn't be going to his restaurants. Bro, it's expensive as hell. <laughs> you know how expensive his restaurants is? But yeah, people are going crazy over this whole situation. It's not. It's a nothing story. You know what it is? When Arsenal lose a couple games, people get mad about everything. They get mad about everything, bro. And if you look at this video, it was just a meaningless video where the man's cutting up steak for the guy, giving it to him. It is what it is. But talk to me. What are you saying? What do you think about Mikel taking the man's meat? I listen. You can't be letting other man feed you their meat, fam. You can't do that. But that's not a sackable <laughs> offense, man. Get your money up. Yeah, get your money up and enjoy some nice steak, bro. I've never been to this man's restaurant, but I've heard some good things. Get your money up, people. Let the man enjoy his life. He's a manager for Arsenal. He's going through a traumatizing moment. One win in seven. He needs to clear his mind. Let you know what care. people said? They, people try oh. to say, oh, I get why people are Arteta out now. I get why people don't want to back this manager. I get... What? <laughs> Off the back of this video, people are trying to say stuff like that, bro. It is hilarious. Some of the things you come up, people come out with. Some of the takes people come out with. Now, let me just show you some of the takes people... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said it's a sackable offense. He should be sacked immediately after this video. Another person said Arteta with Salt Bay. He's so unserious. Another person said why? Am I, why I just watched Arteta get seduced by Salt Bay. Another another person said just seen the Arteta and Salt Bay video. Totally deserve relegation after this. <laughs> another one said Arteta just spent his transfer money on Salt Bay. Damn, bro. I, I think this is an absolute joke. This is absolutely silly. P some people are saying this is absolutely a so sackable offense. And some people are saying it's just not a great look. Personally, to me, I don't care. I think this is this is funny. And that's why I led with this segment, because we need a little Brother, laugh. Ramadan's in two months. He can fast later. He can eat for now. All right? Doesn't there you go. No there fasting. you go. And the pause police, you already know what it is. Uh, big pause on that one. But do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the comment, uh, comment section, and let me know what you guys think about Mikel Arteta enjoying himself. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of players enjoying themselves, and people are like, why are they enjoying themselves on warm weather training? Why are they enjoying themselves in Dubai? These guys are not only in Dubai for work. They're, they're allowed they're... to enjoy themselves, but the pressure's on when they return. That's what I will say. That's true. And the pressure is on Mikel Arteta, ladies and gentlemen, as the Arsenal manager. We have to talk about the next topic. Does Mikel Arteta does Mikel Arteta doesn't trust his squad? That's what people are saying. And personally, I agree. I think Mikel Arteta has not utilized his squad to his full effect. Let's just look at some of the players in the Arsenal squad. If we do, you can see that we have a plethora of players that have not played a lot of games this season. And I, and I'll explain to you what I mean. Yes, we know about the academy players who haven't been given an opportunity. Yes, we know about some of the goalkeepers, uh, the goalkeeper situation. But I'm just going to show you guys some stuff right here. Just give me a second. Here we go. So first, we ha oh, we have the goalkeepers. Of course, we know Carl Hein is not going to get many game time with Ramza and Raya there. Um, these are our, some of our starters, right? Cedric, of course, he's on the peripheries. He's not really one of the first team players at this moment in time. So we can we can imagine Kavior, 
But the thing that I have a question about is, why is KVR always playing when we have an academy youngster who could actually who could actually help out? In it, uh, I forget what his name is off the top Nino of my head. Let me let me check right now. So, is it Lino Suso or Real Walter? Lino Suso, yes. Lino Susu has not been given one opportunity this season. This is this is a player who, if I'm not mistaken, we signed his first pro contract in 2022 with in January for with, with Arsenal. He's a highly rated left back in the academy, and why is he not given an opportunity? Mikel Arteta does not give the academy youngsters too much of an opportunity. And I'm just going to go through some of the list of the academy players after we go through some of the senior players. Of course, Emil Smith Rowe has not been given a big opportunity this season. We've seen Fabio Vera come on as a, uh, as a substitute many times. We know Alneni at this point is just a cheerleader. He doesn't really get much game time. And then you look at Reese Nelson. Why is Reese Nelson not being given a bigger opportunity? You're not going to see anybody yelling and screaming about Marquinhos because, of course, he was on loan and his loan was unsuccessful as he has returned to Arsenal. But I don't want to see him suiting up for Arsenal. I'd rather give it to some of the other youngsters in in and around the squad. But here's where I need to talk to you guys. Obviously, we're not talking about goalkeepers. We're not even talking about center backs. What we're talking about is these two right here. Why is Roel Walters or Lino Susu not given an opportunity in some, in one of the in like the last game versus PSV? You had an opportunity to test them out, give them an opportunity, and see how they do. For example, last year, Pep Guardiola had a choice. Does he play... Uh, Cancelo, who's clearly been having issues in the locker room, or does he go and play Rico William, uh, Rico Lewis? And he played Rico Lewis. He gave him a lot of minutes, and he gave him an opportunity to prove himself, and he's been doing that. He's been doing that many times over. And I think this is starting to become a little bit more of an issue. I st I'm genuinely starting to be a little bit more concerned about Mikel Arteta not trusting the squad and not rotating enough, and not also not rotating, but not using his substitutes to his full capabilities. We can we could talk about academy players as much as we want, but there was there was a statement that came out recently. You know what I'm about to talk about, right? You'll have to remind me. You know, do you that? remember um Omari Hutchinson? Oh, and his brother's statement. Omari Hutchinson's brother came out with a statement after our loss to Liverpool in the FA Cup. And his statement was damning. He was basically speaking about how academy uh, people made fun of his brother. People made fun of Omar Hutchison for leaving. And yes, although he's not getting an amazing, he's not giving, he's not getting an amazing opportunity at, Liber at Chelsea's first team. But what he is doing is he's basically stating that Chelsea give youngsters opportunities, Man City give youngsters opportunities, Liverpool, even Tottenham give youngsters opportunities. But Mikel Arteta has not given too many opportunities to any youngsters and it's starting to become a worrying thing let me know what you think bro is it a bigger issue or is it just another nothing story no it's definitely not a nothing story i mean when you look at Mikel Arteta's rise at arsenal it came from the back of academy products who pretty much saved his job in in his sort of first full season when you look at that chelsea game for example the introduction of esr who is an academy product but kyle saka another academy product and you've got to understand that these younger players have saved his career and, and, and extended his career at Arsenal. The fact that he hasn't been able to give another opportunity to someone, whether it's someone like Real Walters, whether it's someone like Lino Sousa, you know, Mars, Lewis, Skelly, Ethan Nawari, like even in dead rubber games like PSV, like if we look at today, Oscar Bob comes on, you know, and wins, you know, um, Man City the game against Newcastle. Newcastle are no scrubs. It's not a nothing game. And it's a high-pressure situation. That's a massive call from a massive manager who's got a big reputation to be able to sit there and go, you're the academy player. Granted, he's 20 years old. I understand people are going to say he's not a 16, 17-year-old. But the fact is, he's an academy product who hasn't been given first-team football, comes on and scores the winner Sometimes all you need is life injected into your team. Martinelli, Bakayo Saka are not up for it this season. Martin Odegaard hasn't been up to form, hasn't been up to strike. Gabriel Jesus hasn't really been in form. Eddie Nketiah hasn't been in form. Why not try it? Just try something different. You never know what these young players who are hungry for an opportunity, what can happen when you just throw them in and give them an opportunity. It brings a new life to the team. Look at this. Kobe Maynard. Garnacho, 
Garnacho had over a thousand minutes. Kobe Mano has had four uh, 450. Then you go to Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, 16 games, 12 games, over 390 minutes, uh, over 570 minutes for Curtis Jones. Similar thing for Oscar Bob, even at 115 appearances, seven off the bench, of course. And Rico Lewis had over 360 appearance, uh, minutes in, in nine appearances. Now look at our guys, Reese Nelson and Emil Smith Rowe. By the he way, can was... I add, they're established. They're not just youngsters. ESR has had a full season. Reese Nelson's had multiple um, seasons, and they're only getting a few, a few matches, a few appearances off the bench. And look at this, right? There's a second reason why I say sometimes bringing your academy players can change games. Liverpool, how did they win? They brought on two academy players, and that's when the goals came. I'm not saying they directly involved in those goals or made those happen, but they had two academy prospects making their debut against Arsenal in the FA Cup and went on to win 2-0. Sometimes it just takes a different direction to change a game or a moment. Yep, there you go. And next, I'm just going to go back to that statement. Do we kind of owe Amari Hutchinson a little uh, brother? Uh, it, could he be right? Do we owe these guys a little brick? And... Uh, and maybe even an apology for how some of the fans cussed him, abused him for leaving. No, I, th I think some of it was warranted. I'm not saying the abuse or anything, but the fact that he left for Chelsea. Now, Chelsea aren't notorious for giving youngsters opportunities. They're more notorious for giving them loan opportunities and sending them out on loan and seeing how but they Chelsea do. Chelsea right now are playing a bunch of youngsters. Of course. No, 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 of course. I'm not sitting here and saying they're not doing that now. But when you look at Amari Hutchinson's sort of projection at the moment, he's gone into the championship. He could have done that with Arsenal. Arsenal saying, look, you're not going to get a first team opportunity. But I'm 100% sure if he had asked, can I go on loan to another Premier League club or to another top flight team in another league? I'm sure Arsenal will grant that. They've done that with many players. Look at Charlie Patino, Miguel Aziz, Mika Bereth. You know, there's a plethora of players who are on the fringes of joining. Look at Balogun, for example, as well. Last season, he went on loan. And then, obviously, he demanded first-team football. And Arsenal like, look, we can't give that to you right now. And then sold him. So Omari Hutchinson could have bided his opportunity and said, look, I'm willing to go on loan and I'm willing to work with Arsenal, but can you do this? And what's my projection looking like? But if that's if that's the direction they're not willing to accept, then, of course, you know, you've got to go. But you went to Chelsea who haven't given you an opportunity. So the apology can't be given when you've not really been given first-team football either. Mm. Bro, when I look, you look at Barcelona giving a 16 year old a chance. Yeah. Lamine Yamal, like, for example, you got Fermin Lopez, granted they brought him in. Gavi, Pedri, um, they, they've been notorious for giving youngsters opportunities and, you know, bleeding their La Masia to bring, you know, success. And that's what they've been doing. You know, they're you a got two youngsters right here. In Miles Lewis Kelly and Ethan, Anar, uh, Ethan Noir. We should be giving them a little bit more opportunities than we've given them this season. We haven't given them any chance. Yeah, no, we had a dead rubber against PSV. The outcome would not have mattered. We were still top of the group. We would have still finished top of the group. So why not even give them 30 minutes? That's all we're asking for. That's the question. And that's why it's a concern. Because you can't if you can't give them in dead rubber situations when our excuse, for, not excuse, but our reasons for not winning the league last season was squad depth or not having adequate match fitness for certain players. It, it begs the question, why not? Okay. Now we got to talk about something, bro. Serious. Striker situation. We're not signing a striker in January. At least it doesn't look that way. There's three people on the table. Newcastle might need to sell players, as reported the other day. Um, so Alexander Isaac is now on the table. Uh, Victor Ozyman has been on the table, but his release cost is around 130 million. And then Ivan Tony in January has been taken off the table because he's going to be trying to stay at Brentford because they stayed by his side throughout a suspension. He's going to try to keep them up from from rele uh, from relegation. Who should we? Who should Arsenal be signing? Who do you prefer? In the comment section, let me know, and we'll talk about the pros and cons for each one. So I'll just I'll just give you the pros and cons. Alexander Isaac, Premier League proven to a certain degree. He's already played in the Premier League. He's slightly injury prone. Will cost a lot of money because, of course, Newcastle. Even if they do have to sell, they'll, they'll sell him for a, a pretty penny. And I can't really think of too many negatives at this moment in time. 
more positive seasons. He's also played with Martin Odegaard. He's played in the Premier League. He's played in the Champions League. So I'll give him I'll give him a lot of credit there. Victor Ozeman, league winner, shown that he can get a team over the line. Scored how many goals? Champions League experience. Performed at the top level. Another player who has injury, who's slightly injury prone, and has shown in the past, but he also did it in the French League. He did it in, in the Serie A. It just hasn't done it in the Premier League. That's the only negative. There's two negatives. Then Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony has played in lesser teams, hasn't made it in the past. Newcastle, for example. He's done it in the Championship. He's done it for Brentford. Now in the Premier League. He's Premier League proven. He's coming off the back of a betting scandal. Let's see how he performs from now to the end of the season before we say there's too many negatives on his name. I think the person with the least negatives and with the cheapest selling price is the oldest man on, uh, out of the three, Ivan Tony. The most lucrative out of the three is Victor Ozyman, but we'd have we'd be in contention against Chelsea to sign him. And then Victor uh, and, and then Alexander Izak. The likelihood of Newcastle cashing in on Bruno Gamares is higher than cashing in on Victor uh, on Izak. Personally, for me, I think we end up with Ivan Tony, and I don't mind that. I think they're all great players. They all improve us massively. It's just, who would you prefer? Yeah, I mean, my, my order's pretty plain and simple. I've said it before. Victor Osherman would be my priority for the fact that he has won the league. He has, you know, been in the Champions League as well, which is something we strive to go for. We want European competitions. We want to be able to win in Europe. And he's had experience. I'm not saying he's won it, but, you know, being able to take the team after what was it like since Maradona, Napoli haven't won the league and being a driving force to why they won it with like, what was it, like nearly 25 goal contributions, 30 goal contributions in the league. That's a driving force to what makes me want him. Of course, the concerns are, you know, his injury record isn't any better than Gabriel Jesus at the moment. The second option I would go for is Alexander Isaac because he has got that killer touch, the finishing ability. He's got, you know, goals in him as long as you have a creative outlet behind him. Then I would go for Ivan Tony. The only reason is I want to see in these six months has... Has he changed? Because the concern of behavior doesn't always change, especially with an addict. Sometimes they have relapses. They can go back to their old behaviors. So there is a concern. I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing that he gambles or whatever. It's obviously religiously, I don't believe in gambling, but if it's not against his moral codes. But if that happens again, we're, we're without a player for not our fault for six months. So there's a risk with Isaac and obviously with Tony. With Victor Osherman, he's 22, maybe 23 when we sign him, 23, 24 when we sign him. He's proven to be a killer, which is what we need. We're competing against Harlan, for example. We need that sort of world-class striker who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like Erling Harlan. Now, I'm not saying Victor Osherman is the guy who can produce those numbers, but he has shown to have an abundance of goals, regardless of injuries and exclusions in the team and a lack of game time, for example, because of those injuries, he's still returning an output that is massively high in a league that's known for its defensive abilities and being at least physical defensively. So that's the order I would go for. I would love Victor Oshiman, but like you said, all three of them are exactly what Arsenal need. We need a killer. We need someone who can add output, especially goal output in this team. Someone who can get at the end of those chances. We no longer want to be seeing stats of 130 shots to eight goals or three goals that we've had this season. So that's that's what I, I'm hoping we do go for a striker first and foremost, but either three of them would be an absolute an addition. But I'd hope we don't sell Gabriel Jesus because he'll be an he'll be a brilliant option in certain games, and having someone like a Victor Osherman, Ivan Tony, we saw Eddie. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what would be ideal. But I think Victor Osherman comes in and becomes a starter, and Gabriel Jesus drops to the bench. But let's go. see what Arsenal do. Let me know, guys, what you guys think in the comment section. Alexander Isaac, Victor Osman, or Ivan Tony, who would you sign? Let me know your comments and the thoughts. And, of course, make sure you hit that like button right now. Hit that subscribe button also if you haven't already done so. Thank you, Gunner Souls, for this uh, quick upload. And, of course, guys, don't forget, this video was sponsored by SofaScore. So make sure you guys check out that free app. And here's some more information on the app before we go. Love, uh, love for watching, people, and we're out of here. Peace.